gold standard is a monetary system where a country's currency, for example the US dollar, has a value directly linked to gold. Between 1871 and 1914, the gold standard was the dominant money system in the world and governments worked pretty well together to keep it ticking along. Under this system, countries agreed to exchange their currencies for a fixed amount of gold and then set a fixed price at which their gold could be bought and sold. So, for example, if the United States fixed the price of its gold at $20 an ounce, then the US dollar would be worth 1 20th of an ounce of gold and could therefore be exchanged for 1 20th of an ounce of gold. This meant that a country couldn't have more currency in circulation than it's held in gold supplies because otherwise that currency couldn't be exchanged for the agreed fixed amount of gold. The US, for example, couldn't just print more dollar bills to pay for things because there wouldn't be the gold supplies to back it up and those bills would effectively have no value. And because gold is a natural resource, there's only a limited supply of it to go around. Governments can't just create more of it. Of course, some countries strike lucky from time to time and find a large supply of it in their grounds. For example, the California gold discovery of 1848. But such finds are uncommon and can also cause a shock to money systems by instantly increasing a country's money supply, which in turn raises price levels and causes instability. But going back to the idea that most countries couldn't just instantly and drastically increase their gold supplies, because countries often get into debt and have lots of spending commitments, this restriction didn't suit many of them. And when faced with the costly wars of the 20th century, developed nations did away with the gold standard and opted for a money system known as fiat instead. This is a system where currencies have a value given to them by governments rather than linked to gold. Governments give these currencies value by making it law that they must be accepted as forms of payment and by making it a requirement that taxes must be paid with these currencies. Today, national currencies like the US dollar, euro and British pounds are all fiat currencies. And because the value of a fiat currency isn't linked to gold, governments have the power to issue more of it where they see fit while banks are able to create more of a fiat currency through lending. Under the fiat system, there's no limit to how much money can be created, and this has led to the global money supply increasing dramatically. The problem is, the more of a currency that's in a system, the more the prices rise, and this, in turn, leads to inflation and the value of that currency going down. Over the past 100 years, the purchasing power of the US dollar, for example, has fallen by 98%. That means that what one US dollar can buy you today is a lot less than what it could buy you in 1914. But the wages and incomes of most ordinary people don't increase at the same rate as rising prices. And so many people are forced to take up debt just to pay for basic items that they were previously able to afford. Governments are facing a similar problem, except that their debt is on a whole other level. US national debt currently stands at more than $17.5 trillion and is going up literally by the second. Don't believe us? Try taking a look at this. You can even watch how much money is being created live. So, to sum up, as more money enters the system, the more the prices rise and the more debt that people and governments are forced to take on. 